All right, I wanted to get into that. So going back to around 2014, your friend Eric Weiss, he was talking to you about Bitcoin. You kind of uh, ignored it. Uh, then in 2020, he mentioned it again. And within a few weeks, you were buying tens of thousands of Bitcoin for you and your company. What the fuck happened? Well, I guess I lost faith in all of my traditional investment strategies. You know, I, I, uh, I didn't really think much about uh, the dollar and about inflation. I thought there was no inflation, and I thought I could just sit and own big tech companies and the world would work itself out. And I guess around March, everything changed, and the monetary inflation rate tripled, and it became pretty clear that uh, the big tech trade was a crowded trade. You know, At the point that my niece in her early 20s was telling me about Apple stock. You know, I figured that maybe it wasn't, uh, it wasn't cutting edge. So I looked around and I discovered Bitcoin. And when I discovered Bitcoin, I thought, well, this is digital gold on a big tech monetary network, and it's going to grow by a factor of 100. And then I thought, well, I should buy as much as I can. And, and what I tell people even this day is, is what I was buying it and I was thinking, I have to buy as fast as I can, as much as I can, because someone else might figure this out before, and then I won't be able to. And uh, Okay, that's really interesting for the shareholders. But, I mean, I, my understanding is that you were visited by the ghost of Satoshi in, at night and came to you in a dream and converted you. Is it, it, that's not the story. Yeah, <clears throat> Satoshi speaking through all of... <laughs> her or his disciples on YouTube. Your laser eyes are pointed right at my brain right now. Are you stealing my private keys? No, you should keep your private keys. This should save me. I don't want your private keys. Really? OK, well, we just met, so I guess that would be a bit forward. Let's, uh, let's move on to some recent comments you've made. Um, <clears throat> you were on the Bill Ma talking about Bill Maher recently, and you said the following. There's something cruel and tasteless about uh, a, a, a rich white male who wants to deprive billions of poor men, women, and children in Africa, Asia, South America of basic human right of economic self-preservation so they can generate a few laughs. That's a very kind of profound thing to say. And can you just talk a little bit about this idea of property rights for billions around the world and what Bitcoin offers and how you see that? Yeah, well, I think after you study Bitcoin, the light bulb goes off. And what I realized is anybody on Earth that wanted to own anything, that wanted to own some property, has a choice. You can buy land somewhere, but someone can tax it and take it away from you. You can buy gold, but someone can take it away from you. You can buy stocks, but you can never take possession of it. You can buy debt, you can never take possession of it. You can buy jewelry, people will take it away from you. And Bitcoin is the apex property of the human race. It's the first time we figured out how to create true property that you can take possession of with, with full custodial rights, that's least likely to be impaired, that's most mobile. And so, yeah, it doesn't matter if you have a billion dollars. If you have a billion dollars, you can buy a building in Manhattan or Bitcoin. You'd rather have the Bitcoin. And it doesn't matter if you have $387. If you have $387, you can still buy the Bitcoin, take it anywhere. And if you compare that to buying silver or gold or land or a stock, your custodial and your property rights are impaired by everything else. And so. I think Bitcoin is, is truly a, a seminal invention of the human race because for the first time in human history, we can grant property rights to 8 billion people. And I, you know, that's what I think is cool. Right. Is Bitcoin designed to attract attacks? It seems that it is, and the level of attacks are rising to the state level, et cetera. And is it a bug or a feature? I think that which does not kill Bitcoin makes it stronger. Right. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about energy for a second. So 
Um, total energy, global energy production is about 160,000 terawatt hours per year. I'm going to ask the audience right now, how much of that goes into Bitcoin? The choices are 10%, 5%, 1%, or one-tenth of 1%. Of that, how many people think it's 10%? Raise your hand. 5%? 1%? No, this poll sucks. <laughs> one-tenth of 1%? Right, and uh, as you point out, a third of that uh, 50,000 terawatts per hour is wasted. Uh, you point out that literally Bitcoin is running on a quarter of the wasted energy. <clears throat> it's so little of that energy goes into Bitcoin, and yet we have this FUD, this ESG thing going on. What's your current thinking on this? I think that um, Bitcoin is an extraordinarily disruptive, beneficial technology to the entire energy industry. And as I studied it, it became clear to me that it's the highest value use of intermittent energy, it's the highest value use of, of uh, renewable energy, it's the highest value use of wasted or stranded energy, and it's just the highest value use of energy, period. And it's a solution to developing uh, power plants in remote locations, it's a solution to driving up uh, efficiency of plants and driving down cost, and it's a solution uh, it's a solution to solving any kind of challenging energy problem. And I think as the world understands it, they're going to embrace it. The uh, recent news uh, out of China is that there, a lot of mining is leaving China now. It's coming to the U.S. There's, uh, they're, they're shutting down their coal uh, production, et cetera. Is this, um, how do you see this developing in terms of how mining is going to be distributed around the world? Um, it's, it, let me ask you this. It seems that if we went on the global Bitcoin standard, total global energy use would be cut by an enormous amount because you're defunding central banks, you're defunding fiat money, you're potentially defunding uh, huge military operations just by going on a Bitcoin standard. Isn't that the greenest thing anyone could possibly do? <laughs> I... Yes. Yeah. Okay. Look, I, I think Bitcoin is the, is the most uh, efficient use of energy that the human race has yet come up with. I, um, I, I looked at the annual report of Google, and Google puts about 170 or $180 billion of energy into their business to create $1.8 trillion of an asset. Bitcoin puts $4 billion of energy and capital investment to create an $800 billion asset. So Bitcoin, you put in a dollar, you get out $200. Google, you put in a dollar, you get out $10. I studied the entire S&P index and all the annual reports. You put in a dollar, you get out $4. If you look at a bank, JP Morgan, they spend a dollar to generate $3.8 of, of value. And if you study an airline, they put in a dollar to get out 40 cents. So Bitcoin is, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, some 20 times more efficient than Google, and it's 50 times more efficient than a normal company, and it's 500 times more efficient than real energy producers. And I think Bitcoin miners are underappreciated. I mean, they're, they're the path of, of uh, you know, they're, the, they're the, the first line of defense against the entire network. They're securing the network. And the, and the way that Bitcoin mining works is, they're finding the jurisdiction that has the most political support. So Bitcoin miners are finding political capital. They're finding energy capital. They're finding the cheapest energy. They're, they're finding engineering capital. They're engineering these beautiful Bitcoin mining centers that, that are heat engineered, they're very complicated. They're finding technical capital in terms of semiconductors and ASICs. They're putting all that together with, with the raw energy in order to provide the security to the network, and they're migrating continually to the cheapest power, the most supported political jurisdiction, and they're instigating upgrades in the technology. And they're doing that dynamically without being told to do it to the benefit of everyone in the entire ecosystem. I think that's really a beautiful, a beautiful thing.